Good day, Minecraftians. Purple Mentat here, bringing you episode 22 of my Agrarian Skies Hardcore Quest Let's Play. This game pack by Jaded Cat is on the Feed the Beast launcher. Uh, I have been away at PAX the past few days, so I want to apologize in advance both for the hoarseness of my voice and for the gen generally sludgy nature of my brain and thought process today. It's going to be an interesting episode. So, since last time, I've had almost no time to actually work on the world because PAX, and I wanted to get you guys this episode as soon as possible. Sometime in between the next few episodes, I'll finally get that prettied up. I got some fun plans for what I want to do for my power generation and computer room. Or maybe, just maybe, I'll move some of it into here, because I've got a whole bunch of extra space there, and no direct plans for it. So my applied energistic system the home hub of it may move into here, and this will turn into the power plant, because that sounds fun to me. Um, I also need to get more farms built, because these guys are still not remembering what I program into them, and that'll happen after this episode. Uh, the big news is that we are now on version 2.0.2 .2 of the mod pack, and I believe there's another version coming soon. The biggest addition of this version is multiplayer, specifically a cooperative uh, party system that will allow you to complete quests together and, uh, ooh, there's a new learning to Skyblock, uh, to complete guest quests together and earn a group um, number of lives. And let's see what the new learning to Skyblock quest is. Completed, completed, completing, moving molten metals. Moving molten metals requires you to craft an opaque fluid duct and a pneumatic servo. I can absolutely do that for a free reward bag. I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, first off, I wanted to come take a look at my um, sewage quest, which is still at 20% and taking quite a while. The reason for that is that each of these sewers only counts animals in the block directly above them. Now, I could toss upgrades into the sewers to make them expand the radius, but if one sewer detects that another sewer can uh, scan the same place, they will both jam for 40 to 80 seconds. And that's not what I want. I don't want them jamming up and taking forever. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move all of these animals out of this pen. But to do that, I need to make sure needed to make sure that this grinder would not kill them. It's currently full of energy just waiting to do so. So I'm going to put a lever on it, turn that on, and that will cause it to stay idle permanently. And then I'm going to move over here to the chronotyper. I'm going to tell it to move adults. And the lever is currently off, so as soon as it uh, finishes the idle, it'll suck everything through. And now I can go down there and I can uh, reconfigure this without uh, any issues and without any chance of accidentally dropping a whole bunch of uh, animals into the void. And what I'm going to do for the reconfiguring is I'm going to dig up the... Well, first, I'm going to set down a vacuum hopper because I'm guaranteed to lose some things if I don't. I'm going to dig up the sewers and the things around them. And I'm going to remove the fluid ducts as well. Well, that one and this one, anyway. Oops, if I can just get it targeted. Now I'm going to grab one of those sewers out of the vacuum hopper and I'm going to stick it on that item duct, uh, fluid duct, sorry. And then I'm going to fill in the rest of the ground with uh, the stone that just got sucked up by this guy. Edgestone bricks, edgestone brick cover. I'm going to need to go get some more of this brick in just a moment. So I'll go grab the other brick I need and be right back. All right, folks, back with those building materials. Going to get these laid down. And I'm going to put a tin upgrade into the one uh, sewer that I have down there after I destroy the world slightly. So this tin upgrade will increase the radius by three. It was just over top. Now it's one, two, and into the wall. So it will actually cover the entire area. Now, what I'm going to do to get the animals back in here is I'm just going to use my wrench and right-click this chronotyper twice. And it is now moving the adults back in here. Fantastic. Now, if I change it back to move babies and right-click it twice more to turn it around, everything's back to normal. And I can take a look in this sewer. 
previously the four sewers I have had were generating about 20 millibuckets every time they generated. You can see now that this is generating about half of a bucket every time. For those who, well, that number's flashing by awful fast, but I can see that it's saying 482 millibuckets every time. So that's, uh, you know, around six times as fast as it was going before. Our sewage quest is now at 20%. It would have easily been completed by now if I had used one sewer instead of all four. And I may have uh, more use for more sewers in the future. Now, why do I have my, the nether ores in my inventory? Well, I want to get those processed and I want to start setting up um, something to start using uh, a bit of those. Or at least show you how they're processed. The best way to use the nether ores, in my opinion, is to toss them through the pulverizer. Especially the nether redstone. You pulverize it, you get 24 if I smelt it in the induction smelter, I can get two, maybe three redstone ore, but at best, that gives me 18 to 27, and to do that, I need to use rich slag, which I'm not actually certain I have any of, so it's not particularly worth it in my opinion. So the redstone goes straight into the pulverizer. The nether lead, if it's pulverized, gets me four pulverized lead, or if I threw it, throw it through the smel smelter, again, I get two lead ore, which is four pulverized lead when it gets pulverized. So similarly, I want that into the, there we go. And I've got my 48 redstone, I've got my, hmm, that should be eight pulverized lead. Something went horribly wrong there. Oh no, that's four because I only had the one lead ore, derp. Uh, and then the nether quartz ore. Um, I can smelt it to get one nether quartz. I can, again, smelt it. If I pulverize it, though, I get two with a 10% chance of some sulfur, which I need sulfur to make uh, that um, blazing pyrothium. And I'm going to need a whole bunch of that. So, again, that goes in the pulverizer. Now, the ardite, I would get the same amount by of ardite by throwing it into the smeltery from Tinker's Construct to get um, two bars worth. Or... Once again, I can smelt it with a 10% chance of getting some, I mean pulverize it with a 10% chance of getting some gold. So that goes in here. Nether sulfur ore is fantastic because it gets me 24 sulfur each. So those nine of them is more than three stacks worth, almost four stacks worth, which is fantastic because I need a lot of sulfur. And that's the only thing you can do with it is pulverize it. Or I guess I could set it down and break it by hand, but I'll get more out of it by pulverizer than I will even with a fortune three pickaxe and no chance of things exploding on me. Explosions are bad, okay? So, um, what I primarily want to work on this episode is more applied energistics. First and foremost, the this fluid crafting chamber that I had issues with last time, turns out that this is basically just a standalone version of that giant assembly thing uh, for the fluids only. And what it does is you just place it on your system anywhere and you toss your patterns in there. Uh, and this is now showing you can use one water bucket to make four fresh water. I still have all of the fresh water and, uh, fresh milk left over from when I had the other system set up, but now it, um, the system, the ME system can handle everything and I don't need to use those cyclic assemblers anymore. In fact, I'll probably be completely replacing all of my cyclic assemblers at some point because I think that using applied en energistics crafting will be somewhat more efficient than bothering with the cyclic assemblers in terms of CPU. In fact, um, a user by name of Ginger Lion has recorded a small tutorial video on exactly how to do this. Uh, it provides one option. I may be using a different one in the future. So what uh to do first well i'm getting more and more worried over time about this cobble gen madness quest because i need that octuple compressed cobblestone which requires 43 million and change cobblestone to make that in any reasonable amount of time i'm going to need lots and lots and lots of igneous extruders if i take a look at my system i can see that i already have 61 of them i'm going to want about five times that number in addition to the ones that are producing uh, materials for my pulverizer system. And I don't want to keep crafting them all by hand, so I'm going to teach my ME system how to make an igneous extruder. And I'm also going to show you that you can add patterns in ways that I have not yet sh shown. Now, one of the ingredients of the igneous extruder is glass. And to make that glass, I need to teach my um, furnace 
that it can turn one sand into one glass in the way that I've shown you before using the um, ME interface underneath it. Now, I also need pistons. My machine does not yet know how to make pistons, and I want to make those pistons out of aluminum. S but I don't have um, a bunch of cobblestone, planks, and redstone or aluminum in my inventory. But what I can do is just shift click on that button there, the little question mark, and it'll put the pattern in there for me. However, I don't want it to be using just any planks. It will select these planks from the ore dictionary, but I want to teach it how to make its own planks out of rubber wood. And to make it do that, I need to tell it to um, how to make rubber wood first. And secondly, I need to tell it to use that uh, jungle wood in the um, piston recipe, which I'm going to do like this. I take the jungle wood and I just right click on top of what's already there. I don't care what cobblestone it uses because I'm not going to be producing a bunch of other cobblestone and honestly the other cobblestones are just not that useful. Um, when I need them I will make them. Whoops, did not mean to clear that out. One moment, let me redo all that. When I need them I will make them, otherwise um, I'm just uh, going to use them up. Uh, also needed in the igneous extruder is the pneumatic servo. Now with the pneumatic servo I also want it to use aluminum, which is a new recipe that was added to this version's Mind Tweaker config. And I believe it is a forum user by name of Gorai that's been doing a lot of the Mind Tweaker stuff for uh, Jaded Cat for this pack. I'm not 100% certain on that though. All right, and there we go. Two glass, one aluminum, uh, sorry, two glass, two aluminum, one redstone. You don't need to worry about this being ingot aluminum, um, I mean one Tinker's Construct Aluminum Ingot and one Mariculture Aluminium Ingot. They're both registered under Ingot Aluminium and Ingot Aluminum. So it, it'll work out just fine either way. Um, the system will pull the whatever aluminum ingots it has into it. And last but not least, I need the machine frame. And I do have the option of making this out of aluminum, but I'm going to use iron because I feel like I'm going to be taxing my aluminum production enough uh, at the moment. And there we go. So once I add machine frame, piston, jungle wood planks, glass, pneumatic servo, and last but not least, the igneous extruder itself to the system, which I want to tell to use regular glass. Oops, I for think I forgot to do that on the pneumatic servo. Nope, I remembered to make it use regular glass. Let me make sure all of these are using regular glass. They are. Oh, nope, this one, the machine frame is not. So let me show you how you can edit a recipe. To edit a recipe you have already have encoded, you can just put it back in the bottom slot and it'll pull up what, what's already there. And I want to replace these special glasses with regular glass. The reason I'm doing that is it will attempt to create the special glass to fill in instead of just creating the glass that it already can. And I think that might be changing in Applied Energistics too, but that's an entire full rewrite that I haven't learned anything about yet because it's on a version of the game I'm not playing. So I'm going to take my glass into sand, put it into my ME interface, and I'm going to put the rest of these into my ME assembly chamber. Going to come over to my system and tell it to start making me a whole bunch of igneous extruders. And it is going to need quite a while to do so because it is very short on glass. So igneous extruders, I currently have 61. I want um, 239 more than that. I'm making 300 of these in total. With 300 of them to make 43 million cobblestone will still take 60 hours in game. That's a lot of time. So um, I can either use these buttons here to tell it exactly how many I need and slowly try to adjust around, but that's annoying when I want exactly 239 and know exactly how many I want. Instead, I can just type the number right in there, and then I tell it to begin. And if I come over and look at my crafting monitor, I can see it's waiting on glass so it can make machine frame and pneumatic servo to craft uh, another igneous extruder. And if I look up the igneous extruders, I can see that one's already been made. And if I look up glass, I can watch as that gets slowly created. So, fantastic. I'm not going to be able to use glass for anything for quite some time because it's all going to be uh, occupied making igneous extruders, but that's all right. I have other plans in mind. So, next on my agenda is to continue the You're a Wizard Steve uh, line of quests, which the next step on the Thumbcraft chain, because there's some really interesting toys I want out of Thumbcraft, comes from Sky Shards. 
uh, sky shards um, requires me to generate air, fire, water, earth, order, and entropy shards using the ex nihilo mechanic of bashing things with a hammer. Those things that I need to bash are obsidian, TNT, ice, grass, sandstone slabs, and netherrack. I'm rather low on obsidian and netherrack, so I'm really hoping to get a little bit lucky, but let's put those down and start that up. And the fortune three should help a lot in that. And yep, there's my first fire shard. Let's hope the uh, obsidian can go just as easily. And this takes a while because it's obsidian and it takes forever to mine. And there we go, one order shard. I'll come back and smash the rest of that uh, off camera. I am using a glacial precipitator on the water line fed with power to produce ice. So I'm going to grab out what ice I've been able to make so far. Which is quite a lot of it actually. And this will go, it should go very quickly. Got to be careful with ice in uh, the day as it will turn to water. And then it could run all over the place. So you got to put it down and smash it fast. Luckily, it does smash very quickly. And that gives me water shards. And just because of the sheer ease of uh, producing and smashing ice, this might actually end up being the primary shard that I end up using anytime something calls for random shards. Then again, the drop rate on ice is not exactly high. That might be an issue. Anyway, moving on. Um, so that gets me a bunch of the shards. I went and smashed a bunch of grass in the sheep's pen. Just break some, replace with dirt to get myself a bunch of earth shards. Those actually were a fairly good drop rate for me. So maybe that can be my primary. Um, now I need my sandstone slabs. You have to place one on top of the other to get the full block. And then when you smash it, you have a chance of getting a shard. And there we go. One air shard. And last but not least, TNT, the stuff I've collected from quests, and a bit more. Be very careful not to put this near redstone, or you'll blow things up and be sad. This breaks very quickly, sometimes, and that gets me my entropy shards. There we are. And now I can complete the quest. Manual submit, boom, and claim my rewards. I receive a full heart, up to 23 lives, um, some infused stone. These are the ores you would normally find in the world to collect the uh, various uh, um, shards. I wonder if I can smash them with a diamond hammer. I'll do so on the earth infused stone because I already have a bunch of those. It does not seem to be functioning. It's taking quite a while. In fact, it's going about as fast as punching it by hand would. So I'm going to instead use this Fortune 3 pickaxe that I got a long time ago. And that gives me now a total of 5 fire shards and 20 earth shards. And I got a greater reward bag. Let's see what's inside. In the greater reward bag was a potion of flight 4 for 8 minutes. Mm, I could really hope for something a little bit better than that sometime soon. We'll just dump that into the uh, quest rewards and miscellaneous I don't know what chest. Actually, this is also a quest rewards and miscellaneous I don't know what chest. I really need to, you know, get that, all of this added to the general inventory system. There's just no use for any of it, so I don't want it taking up my ME storage. Okay, moving on. Next quest is study of magic. I need to make myself a table. So I'm going to go make a table. Tables are very easy to make. Just uses some wood. There we are. There we go. Table from Thomcraft uses wood and planks. I have wood, but no planks at the moment. But that's okay. I know how to make a lot of wood. I mean, sorry, slabs and planks. So I'm just going to tell it to craft me a whole bunch of stacks of planks, and that'll only take a second. And then I can make my table. I really love that automated crafting. I'm not as much of a fan of this automated lookup, so I'm actually going to turn that off. I'm no longer enjoying it. 
shift click that in, craft one table. And as you can see, it happily completes the quest even though I'm crafting it through the um, applied energistic system. Ooh, this will give me another fire shard, good. All right, need to create one thermometer. Thermometers uh, have been made more cheap recently uh, thanks to um, the latest uh, thermcraft. Thermometer. Um, it just uses some gold, some glass, and some shards. And I've got the gold and I got the glass, and I'm gonna use two earth shards because I have more of those than anything else. And that gets me the thermometer. What the thermometer is used for is staring through at things. You can scan them by holding down right click. And you can see nothing can be learned from this. Boom, there we go. I got some research points for Saxum and Terra. There we are. And I'm gonna end up doing this to basically everything over time. Don't think I can do Oh, I can do torches, yay. And once I have uh, um, a little bit more time to get everything ready, I will show you um, all of the things that you can scan to get everything. And you'll notice that off of that Lux, I discovered a clue to new research. If I go into the Thaumonomicon and, oops, I did not actually light up where the clue to the new research was, but it should be here in Alchemy. No? Artifice? Anyway, I'm not certain where that uh, clue to new research showed up, but I will have um, a whole bunch of awesome stuff available to me over time. Oh, hey. Ex Acclimo. Sky Alchemy. From something. Sky Alchemy Power. And this gives you clues to uh, create the... Uh, different shards, whereas the quest book for Agrarian Skies skips past the clues and goes straight to spelling it out. In any case, I've now crafted the thermometer and the tables. I can claim my reward of another full heart and another reward bag. So, consume that full heart, get up to 24, and the reward bag, I'm a little short on space. Let me toss some stuff into my bag here. All right. So, opening up the reward bag, I received a Book of Fortune 3. That's fantastically helpful. Be right back. All right, I am back again. Next step along the line, Wands of Power. It is asking me to create a focus pouch and an iron cap, two iron caps, and submit them manually. Let's see if I even have the ability to create the focus pouch yet. If not, I may need to begin researching. Focus pouches are gonna be in thaumaturgy, and it's going to require wand foci. So before I can do that, I'm going to need to start doing an awful lot of scanning and researching. Now, let me get all of that prepared. It will take me just a moment off camera. Once I have all of the um, preparations complete for researching, I will do a quick run through on how to unlock every single aspect and uh, the first steps in researching Thaumcraft in the sky. Bad news, folks. I was taking a look at how much time I've gone through already, and I'm not going to have enough time in this episode to give Thaumcraft the proper attention that it needs, so it's going to have to wait for some other time. Instead, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to finish up this Moving Molten Metals quest. So, I want to do that. All of my quest completions and such on camera, because reasons. So, I need to craft one pneumatic servo and some opaque fluid fluid ducts. Hand this in, grab my piece of whatever, or piece of heart, which is just enough to get me another full heart. And I'm gonna see if I can open enough, up enough room in my inventory here. There we go. Uh, yeah, I can toss things in here for now so that I can open up this reward bag. In that reward bag, I found eight cherry jelly and eight blackberry juice. Less than super awesome, but kind of nice uh, as early on as you're supposed to be completing uh, molten metals. So unfortunately, that is all the time that I'm going to have for this episode. You'll have to join me tomorrow to see more of Thaumcraft and what it can do. Um, 
between episodes I am finally going to get those planters built and I'm going to reorganize this area into something that looks prettier, empty all of the barrels into the ME system, potentially even add another uh, bit of storage or two to the ME system, get all of those berries, barrels emptied out, basically just a lot of janitorial and housekeeping stuff. So really looking forward to showing you what I've got and also Tomorrow, at the end of the uh, next episode, I'm going to have a world download of, uh, available. I checked with uh, Jaded Cat to make sure that she wouldn't mind people getting a bit of a head start by starting from where I'm at. And I'm going to start doing world downloads uh, fairly regularly, whenever I think things are in a uh, you know decent space and I can uh, feel confident about what I'm putting out there. So, thanks again for joining me. Uh, if you're enjoying yourself, please like, comment, favorite, subscribe. Um, it really helps me out a lot, and um, I will see you next time.